proceed with the after takeoff climb checklist down to the line, check for any computer resets or OABs. Pilot monitoring then reads the status page. Ecamm actions complete. Flawless victory. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel, Captain SQ, where we're going to discuss on Airbus systems, emergency procedures, and supplementary techniques on how to fly the plane. A320 single engine failure or fire after takeoff, single engine landing, and go around. Indications and steps to take. Disclaimer, always refer to your company manuals, this video is merely a guide. And before we start, do smash the like button, it will help tons in the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you find this video helpful. And with that said, let's dive in. Pilot monitoring announces engine failure and cancels caution. A good tip for the pilot flying will be to align the aircraft to the center line using the rudder before rotating the aircraft if engine failed at exactly V1 speed. Rotate to a pitch of 12.5 degrees, then follow SRS orders. You can set toga thrust if your aircraft is heavy. When the FMGC detects an engine failure, the speed target becomes the higher of V2 or current speed limited to V2 plus 15 knots. Beta target replaces side slip indicator. With a positive rate of climb and positive movement of the vertical speed indicator on the right and radio altimeter, call for gear up. Apply rudder input to center the beta target. With the beta target centered, trim the rudder. Why do we need to make it center? Well, drag is minimized so you can get optimum aircraft performance. The rotary selector on the pedestal trims at a rate of 1 degree per second. With an engine fail, the trim range is at a ballpark figure of around 15 to 18 degrees. Ensure aircraft is trimmed and follow flight directors before engaging the autopilot. Once the appropriate flight path has been established and the aircraft is 400 feet above the runway, call out for ECAM actions. And today, Scorpion from Mortal Kombat will be my pilot monitoring, so he will be doing the ECAM. If you see his face pop up in the video, you know that he is performing pilot monitoring duties. ECAM actions, engine 2 fail. Engine mode selector ignition. Truss lever idle. Truss levers should be moved by the pilot fly. Remember, movement of the truss levers, engine master switches, and fire push button must be confirmed by both pilots. Do review my previous videos regarding this. With the mode selector at ignition and truss lever at idle, the FedEx will attempt an automatic relight. Engine master 2 off. Confirm. Confirm. Engine master 2 off. This action will close the low pressure and high pressure fuel valve and resets the FedEx. What is considered an engine damage? Abnormal engine indications such as N1 readings being zero, repeated and uncontrollable engine stalls, high vibration prior to flame out or loud noise or explosion. In this engine failure, there is damage so no option for any relight. Pilot monitoring engine one fire push button. Push confirm, engine 1 fire push button, push. The fire push button isolates the engine from fuel, hydraulic power and electrical power and bleed air and also arms the squibs. Why is there an ECAM countdown before discharging the agent? Well, if you know the answer, please do comment below. Agent 1 discharge. When ECAM suggests there is no damage, a relight can be attempted by the crew. However, it is recommended to perform all ECAM actions first and only consider the relight procedure when reaching the status page. Stop ECAM, clean up the aircraft when the engine is secured. Question, when do you think is the right time for the pilot flying to relay a pan call or mayday call to air traffic control? Please do put your comments down below on what do you think. How do we know when engine is secured? Well, it depends. If it's an engine failure without damage, switching the engine masters off secures the engine. Maybe we can relight the engine later on. If engine is damaged after agent one is discharged, then the engine is secured. If it is an engine fire, then after fire is extinguished or after agent 2 discharge, then engine is considered secured. Do make sure not to exceed the maximum takeoff thrust limit of 10 minutes. At acceleration altitude, push vert speed to give vert speed 0. At F speed, select flaps 1. And at S speed, select flap 0. As the speed reaches green dot, pull altitude selector for open climb. Set MCT when liver MCT message appears on the FMA. 
If trust levers are in flex, set climb briefly, then MCT. If trust levers is in toga, then set MCT directly, maximum continuous trust. After flap retraction, disarm spoilers and turn off runway and turn off lights. Continue ECAM and monitor the fuel imbalance. TCAS is set to TA as aircraft performance may not be capable of RA orders. Clear engine 1 fail. Land ASAP Amber. It is advisable to consider landing at the nearest suitable airport. Okay, let us have a look at secondary system failures. System pages. Only one bleed is available. The pilot monitoring then analyzes electric page. Only one generator is supplying the electrical network and consider starting the APU. Pilot monitoring analyzes the hydraulic page and the failed engine hydraulic system is powered by the power transfer unit or PTU. Stop ECAM prior to the status page. Proceed with the after takeoff climb checklist down to the line. Check for any computer resets or OABs. Pilot monitoring then reads the status page. ECAM actions complete. Flawless victory. Once you have completed the ECAM actions, now it is time to decide where you want to divert or land because you have a land is up amber message. Well, you're only flying with one engine, so you don't want to be hanging around in the air for long. Considerations for a suitable airport will be the weather conditions, the runway length, etc. Performance calculations are important as you could be overweight, have some issues with your flaps or slats or even gears, or maybe the approach is a circling approach. All these factors will affect the approach and landing of your aircraft. Once you have prepared the FMGS, the pilot flying will give a briefing for the approach, go around and other important items. Next will be to tell your cabin crew and depending on your airline standard operating procedures, all briefings to the cabin crew will cover these items such as the nature of your emergency, intentions moving forward, time taken until landing and any other special instructions. You could later inform air traffic control ATC of your intention and later on your company. Other people you need to inform will be your passengers. An example of a public announcement will be, this is your captain speaking. I left my lunchbox at the airport terminal building. Therefore, we are heading back to get it because I'm getting hungry. Just kidding. Just inform your passengers that you are experiencing a slight technical issue with the aircraft and where you intend to land. Let us move on to single engine landing. A manual approach and landing with one engine inoperative is conventional. Maximum use of the autopilot should be made to minimize crew workload. Auto land is available with one engine inoperative to Cat 3A. The beta target remains yellow as long as the trust on the remaining engine is below a certain value. The slip indicator becomes the blue beta target when flaps are selected and the aircraft is approaching its maximum trust capability. Do not select the gear down too early as large amounts of power will be required to maintain level flight and the recommended technique is gear down at GS star. This will vary according to your company standard operating procedures. The rudder trim should be reset to zero in the latest stages of the approach and the recommended procedure is to zero the rudder trim around 50 feet. Consider the use of idle reverse for battle control during the landing roll. Let us dive into single engine go around. Select Toga Trust to initiate the go-around. Select your go-around flaps. If manually flying, apply the rudder trim to compensate for the increase in thrust and try to keep the beta target centered. Pitch to 12.5 degrees, follow the SRS. Pilot monitoring, select one stage of flap up and with the positive climb, select gear up. The lateral flight director mode will be in NAV mode if it does not engage, the lateral mode will be in go-around track. Assuming that the two-way point is correct, push heading to engage nav and read the FMA. The FMGC changes from approach page to go-around page. And at engine out acceleration altitude, select vert speed 0 by pushing to level off. At F speed, select flaps 1. And at S speed, select flaps 0. Select open climb when the speed is approaching green dot. Perform the after takeoff climb checklist. Disarm the spoilers and turn runway and nose lights to off. Read after takeoff climb checklist. And some bonus here, single engine circling. 
Circling is normally flown in config tree with gear down. However, with one engine inoperative, the aircraft may not be able to maintain level flight in this configuration. The crew should check the maximum weight shown in the QRH circling approach with one engine inoperative procedure table. If the landing weight is above this maximum value, the landing gear extension should be delayed until established on final approach. However, do take note that if the aircraft flies below 750 feet RA with the gear not extended, the ECAM warning, landing gear not down lock, and the master warning will be triggered. The red arrow under the gear lever illuminates. GPWS too low gear warning is generated if the landing gear is not down locked by 500 feet RA. And that's it for this video. Flawless victory. Do like and subscribe. Press the notification bell so you will be the first to know for any updates. And I will see you in the next video.